Welcome and be inspired with Dominic. I currently have two projects going and neither of them is making any progress. So of course I start another one. Let's make a plastic pen holder, which you can also batch out and which might not work at all. So first thing we need is something to use a pen on and a pen, but actually this kind of pen. So let's see, something to hold the bottom end, something to hold it here. That might be an idea. Looks a little bit like a shoe. Not a comfortable shoe, mind you. I first thought about adding something to hold the pen like this, but if you tilt it forward, it'll move away from you. Let's just give it a try. So that's the, the cut made and probably the only cut for this project. The main important thing is you don't do undercuts. Basically if I had this peak here tilted a little bit that way it would block this from going up. It has to be able to go this way because we want to sandwich something between there and we want to get it out afterwards. Which leads me to the next problem to solve and that's the fact that whatever you put in there has a thickness. So. Works. If I put this in here, it pinches here. What that means is that you actually need a, a geometry on this side to account for the thickness on every surface. So that's where this line comes in handy. That's about the thickness of the material I want to use. So I'll head over to the spindle sander and remove that much material. Except there's something else I want. I want this piece basically dent it in a little so that if you put a pen in there it doesn't roll away. And to achieve that I'm going to use the material that I need to remove here and instead of removing the whole thing I'll work at an angle to get a divot here and then I have to use some kind of tool to remove material on this side. Let me show you while I try this for the first time so wish me luck. And this is as much as I can get with the spindle sander as is. This one by choice, because like I said, I want to go here at an angle. And this one because, well, it doesn't go in there. So I have to use probably a file for that. But I will mark the center, which I want to remain untouched. Also, I just realized I could make life a little easier for me by adding a line here and also here so I know how much material to remove. Now we're getting there. I'll be using a strip of plastic. I have no idea what it is. I think it's acrylic. It's from a box of leftovers, which you can get cheap on the internet.
So it's been nine days, more like nine minutes, but it's a video, so you can't really prove or disprove anything. I just made sure that it's cooled down. I hope that it's cooled down enough and we'll unbox this now. I wasn't sure whether leaving this foil on is a good or bad idea. Apparently, it's a bad idea. It's kind of melted to the edges, so let's let's call that I don't know mid-century modern. What I found interesting is that here, where the biggest kink is, there is no foil. It actually tore, so that's a good thing to keep in mind, or not. It, makes it easier to remove. Let's give it a try. I'm kind of satisfied with this. It turned out better than expected. So that would be a good place to end the video. Unless I wanted to do another version. Do you want me to do another version? Why do I even ask? There's one major thing to be improved on this one. It's too complicated. We need a point of contact here and one here and possibly with a, a divot of some kind to keep the pen from rolling out. This back piece is unnecessary. So if it just ends here, that's great. You could probably get away with something like this where the pen just lays on top. Something like this. And to avoid a problem down here with tilting and so and such, we could make it this way. That would actually simplify the design to a point where I wouldn't need to make these divots to keep the thickness going. It's worth a try. So we do that. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. This time around I'm using this thing. It's just a clamp, basically. It's easier to manage than with the pliers. So things have cooled off, let's see, comes out alright, it stands and it works, but it's not actually what I intended. Let's do a couple more steps with this. I could probably improve the shape a little more, but that's fairly easy with the, even with the spindle sander. It kind of heats up the material and you get this white residue, but you can easily chip it off once it's cooled. 
I like how this turned out. Like I said, you could improve on it, but the proof of concept works. Something for me counterintuitive was to actually make this in front deeper. But now that I that I've seen this or tried it out, I don't know how I ever thought otherwise, but it catches the pen pretty well. And yeah, it could in theory roll out of there, but you you saw it horsing around and it works fine. And while you could do something more here, make it thinner, it's probably, well, it's basically pointless because you'd use these pen stands either to display a beautiful pen, and if the stand is ugly, the pen looks more beautiful. Or you do it to sell, and then you'd probably only sell the pen and not the stand. I have a few more pieces I want to try out. A thinner one, colored ones, but I'll probably put those over on Instagram so you can follow me there at Be Inspired with Dominic. And you should also subscribe to this channel because you're watching it anyway, so might as well subscribe. I'm putting out videos frequently and you'll find out if you ring the bell. Make sure to ring the bell because the YouTube algorithm is another matter. Probably could use some sanding too. So I hope you enjoyed this and it inspires you. If it did, please share it with your friends or your enemies. I'm pretty open in that regard. Thanks for watching and as always, remember to be inspired.